Okay, so we've looked at stress strain diagrams, we've looked at uh, timber grading. Uh, there's one or two other things that we need to understand. We've looked at the wood water relationship, <coughs> and we need to understand how the moisture content of the wood can affect its mechanical properties. And for this reason, it's really important to make sure that we test wood in an environment where it's been conditioned in that environment so that we know. Uh, that under the specific conditions, let's say 65% relative humidity, 20 degrees centigrade, that's what the properties are. And we also need to know how those properties are going to vary if we change the relative humidity or if we change the temperature. So people have done experiments where they've looked at the relationship between temperature and strength or temperature and stiffness uh, and uh, moisture content and strength and stiffness and another property called toughness. So we've already looked at what is the strength of a material, and that is more scientifically the failure stress of that material. Uh, we've looked at the, what the stiffness is. That is equivalent to the strain, the stress divided by the strain. So that's the amount the material moves under a, a known applied load. Stress over strain equals stiffness. And then we have another property, material property. And these are all words that are in common usage, but they have very specific meanings in science and material science. So the toughness is equivalent to the amount of energy expended to failure, but it's also related to the failure mode, which is something I need to explain now if we were to look at a stress-strain diagram if we have a material that shows this nice linear hooky in behaviour and then bang it just fails like that that is characteristic of what would be known as a brittle material. So toughness is related to what's called a mode of failure. It's not just the amount of energy that goes into the failure, but it's the mode of failure. If we were going to look at the stress-strain diagram of a piece of wood, we might see something more like that. Now that is anything but a brittle failure. So this type of failure here, we would expect to see for a piece of glass. We would deform a piece of glass, and at a certain point, it just goes bang. Now, a piece of wood more often shows this type of failure mode in that we get little bits of failure occurring over quite a long period of time. So there is a maximum stress we can apply when the material begins to fail, but it takes a very long time to reach complete failure before that, that final break occurs. Now this is characteristic, characteristic of a tough material. So that material has a property of toughness, this is a brittle material, so other words for this would be brash. Brittle or brash failure. And if we were to look at a failure surface after that material had broken, a brittle material might have a failure surface something like that. So it's characterised by these very linear looking failure surfaces. A tough material 
would have a failure surface much more like that. So they're quite different in their appearance, they're quite different in their behaviour. Now this property of toughness that's demonstrated by timber under most circumstances is a really nice property for a structural material because before wood fails it will make one hell of a lot of noise. You'll know something's going wrong and it will sound like something's going catastrophically wrong an awful long time before something actually is going wrong. So you get plenty of warning when timber's going to fail, provided it's in this region where it behaves as a tough material.